This is our second webinar in the series of uh, webinars that we're doing on web performance optimization and uh, image optimization. We're going to be discussing something that's uh, closer to everyone, right? I have myself been a developer uh, and, you know, uh, we have dealt with uh, web performance optimization all our lives, right? And one of the tools that we use to measure web performance is uh, Google PageSpeed, right? Which is basically a report that runs on your website on desktop and mobile. Uh, it runs, uh, you know, audit based on a certain checklist and tells you what needs to improve for your page to be, uh, for your page to have better performance, right? Uh, so in this webinar, we are going to discuss a few techniques that are related to images that will help you improve your uh, page performance and therefore your Google page speed insight score. Now it is possible that you do not use Google PageSpeed Insight. Maybe you're using a tool like Lighthouse or Web Page Test or GT Metrics. But then the concepts that we discuss in this webinar to uh, optimize your images or how to make them load faster, they're applicable regardless of which tool you're using to measure the performance, right? Uh, the principles remain the same. The end result that we would achieve remain the same. Like what we would do in this webinar is uh, we would just focus on the image related metrics, right? So page, page speed is a huge test. There are like, uh, you can see it on my screen right now. There are multiple audits that are run uh, on a page, which could be related to CSS. They could be JS, text files. How is your server responding to uh, you know, network requests, et cetera. But then we would just focus on image related issues, right? We would start with a website, uh, something similar to what we had in the last webinar. It's, uh, you know, we sort of mimicking uh, the website that's, you know, you know, typically like an e-commerce website, we're mimicking that. We'll start with something that is highly unoptimized, right? And then gradually through the course of this webinar, we would take certain steps that would allow us to get from this state that you see on my screen on the left, uh, to the state that you see on the bottom right, which is every audit related to images, uh, we would be able to clear all of them, right? Uh, it would be a live demonstration. We would take a break of five minutes midway during the webinar, if you have any questions. And then towards the end of it, we would have probably another 10, 15 minutes when we wrap up uh, to answer some of the other questions uh, that you might have, right? Uh, I will quickly show you, uh, you know, how this, code or let's say how this website has been set up. Again, the code would be available on GitHub. You would get a copy of this uh, webinar recording along with the accompanying slides and the code uh, post the webinar. So you need not, let's say, worry about how this is working. I'll just quickly demonstrate what we have done. It's a, it's a very simple website that we have built, which uh, has just one page, bare minimum, uh, JS or CSS, et cetera. It's mostly about images, right? And to instead of our database, we basically have a list of products, right? Each product right now has three image URLs associated with it. Uh, you can see original, original IK and auto-optimized. I'll get to what these URLs uh, signify as we go through the demo. But then we would be starting with the original image, which is nothing but an image that's checked into our code, right? So if you see on the left, uh, these images are checked into images, content, original folder, and then we have a list of images there, right? So we are starting off with this. Now, these are unoptimized images. If I go back to my page, I had already loaded the page before the webinar started. You can see on my screen, the image sizes right now are in MBs, right? Now, it is possible that on your website right now, the state is a lot better. It is possible that, you know, you do not have images that are running into MBs of size. Uh, but then you might still be facing some problems related to page speed. So the concept still remains the same. I have started with highly unoptimized images so that, uh, you know, we can demonstrate what's the impact on, uh, you know, page optimization as we go through this uh, project, right? Also in between, if you have any questions, you can put them in the Q&A section that you would have, and we will address them in the mid webinar break or towards the end of it, right? So I'll just... Yeah, so what we will do is, let's first look at what are the parameters that are there in the page speed report, right? So there are, we can classify the audits that are related to images in a page speed report. We can classify them into two categories. The first category is related to the images itself, right? What is the image that you're loading, right? Is it in the right format? 
Has it been compressed, which is basically efficiently encode the images? Has it been resized correctly for the device, which comes under properly sized images? The names that you see in black are the, the names that PageSpeed report uses. So for example, properly sized images serve images in next 10 formats. Uh, these are the names that are used in the page speed report. So this is the first category related to what is the image you're loading. And then there are a second category of audits, which is related to how you are loading the images, right? So uh, the first one is defer off screen images, which in simpler term is lazy loading. Uh, are you serving the assets or the images with the right cache policy? Are you using a CDN to deliver the images, right? We would dive deeper into all of these, but then these are the two category of uh, paid speed audits that we would be covering. There are a few more, which we would, you know, get to uh, towards the end. We would not be covering them during this webinar, which are basically related to your CLS and LCP metrics. Those are pretty detailed to get into if we, you know, if we start talking about that, maybe we'll cover them in a separate webinar. We'll just cover these six uh, during this webinar, right? We'll start with, and we would not be going in the exact same sequence. We would probably start with something that's simple to uh, set up first, right? So on this page that we have right now, the first thing that we want to talk about is delivering the images with the right caching headers, right? If you look at my screen right now, I would probably zoom into this a bit. If you look at my screen right now, currently every image that is loading on the page has a cache control header that is set to no cache, no store, which basically means we are telling the browser not to store a copy of the image, not to cache it at all. Therefore, if I reload the page, the browser, even though I have allowed the browser to cache the content, the browser would still have to download it off the internet, right? So you would see that the browser starts downloading each image, the entire content from the internet, and it is taking quite a lot of time in doing that. Now, theoretically, uh, if the user has already downloaded the image on their browser, it does not make sense to download it every time that the same image is being requested, right? So if I keep refreshing the page, the user has already downloaded the content. It is possible for the browser to store the content and we should be using that capability of the browser to minimize this time that the browser is taking or let's say the amount of data that it is consuming every time for downloading these images, right? So very simple thing, right? And this is, again, this, like most of the things that we would discuss in this webinar, this is something that you can do even without image kit, right? So what we will do is that instead of providing a no cache, no store uh, response header, this is a complete extreme where we are stopping the browser from caching anything. We would basically go back to our code and we would change this no cache, no store header to something that allows the browser to cache, right? So public, basically instructs that the browser and any intermediate layer, like if you were using a CDN, could be your ISP, that they're allowed to cache the image. And then using the max age, you specify the time that the browser, or let's say any other uh, layer in between, how long can they cache the image, right? So this time is specified in seconds. This value corresponds to 180 days, right? So we are basically now saying that the image that we load in the browser should stay cached for 180 days. I'll restart my server for this change to reflect. And now if I load the page, the first request would still get downloaded from the internet because till now the browser still had a no cache, no store uh, directive available to it through the cache control header. Now you see that the browser has now got the right cache header that we set in our system, which is public max age, uh, for 180 days. Now, if I reload the page, we'll wait for everything to get completed, right? So it's still, it has still downloaded this 27 MB. This page is 33 MBs to begin with. Yeah, so it's 33.8 MBs in size. It's taking 29 seconds to load. Now, if I reload the page, you would see that these requests do not go to the network. If I reload the page right now, you would see everything is getting served from memory cache, which is basically the browser's cache. The time taken is zero milliseconds because obviously the image was locally available. The browser just had to pick it up and start showing it. And because there was no load that happened over the internet, the total time to load the website has gone down to 4.81 seconds, right? So our website size, we are still loading 33.8 MB of content, but because we are able to leverage the browser cache, our page loads quicker, right? Now, this is a practice that you should adopt for 
your images and maybe for other static content like JS, CSS as well, that's loading on the page, right? No matter how many times I refresh the page, it would always pick it up from the memory cache as long as it is possible for the browser to do it, right? So this is step one, right? That you should always cache your content so that for subsequent requests, the browser does not have to download them again. You should increase the cache time. Ideally, uh, Google Page Speed, uh, to clear this audit in Google PageSpeed, right? I will show you the audit that corresponds to it, which is use efficient cache policy on static assets. Right now, Google PageSpeed did not pick it up in the page audit that we ran, but then had there been a lot of images, it does pick it up. So you should ideally be caching your images for more than 180 days, if possible for an year, right? So that should be the ideal cache policy that you should have on your images. Uh, if you are using image kit, which I would, you know, cover as a part of the next point as well. If you're using image kit, image kit does cache the content for you for 180 days. Uh, we take care of the cache control header. So you do not have to set anything uh, on your own, right? Now we are able to basically optimize what happens on subsequent load, right? So the first time, or let's say if I do a hard refresh and you can do a hard refresh on your systems by either using a command shift R keys or if you long press this refresh button you would be able to see an option to hard reload if i hard reload this page which forces the browser to skip the cache you would see that the requests are still going to the server that we are using for this demonstration and they're still taking several seconds to load right so we need to optimize the first load that happens uh, on our page right and for to optimize that we come to the next step, right? Which is basically using a CDN for image delivery, right? So what a CDN would do, and I will quickly show this to you. What happens is, let's say this big blue dot that you see here, this is, let's assume this is my server and my users are spread across the globe, right? If the users right now, when they're requesting an image, ideally they would have to get everything from the server, right? So even if someone is sitting in Russia, they would still have to navigate all the way across the globe to the US to get that content, which obviously takes a lot of time. What a CDN does is CDN has their nodes available globally, right? So for example, in this picture, these small blue squares that you see are the CDN nodes. So instead of downloading content all the way from the US, users can download content from the CDN node that's closer to them, right? Uh, you can use any CDN of the internet, any popular CDN would do the same thing for you. It will help you accelerate the download time. So currently if it's taking 11 seconds or 10 seconds to download a particular image, this time would basically come down, right? Uh, to demonstrate this, uh, in this particular case, what we will do is we will use image kit. Image kit comes built in with the CDN. I have already made this change, right? So for example, in the first, uh, first page load that we saw, we were using the original image URL, which was basically the image that was checked in. Now in the second one, in the second demonstration, we will use the image kit URL. Again, image kit would not do any optimization at this stage. We have purposefully passed a parameter which forces the original image from image kit. We're just demonstrating the impact of using the CDN, right? So what I'll do is I'll replace our existing template with the template that now uses an image kit URL to load the page, right? I'll save this. I would reload the page. So earlier the domain that was being used was the server that we had over here. Now, if I reload the page, you would see that the images now come through image kit, right? So you would see that the domain has changed to ik.imagekit.io. It would still take longer for the first time for the load to happen for the first time. But then now if I load the page again, you would see that the load time decreases significantly. Let me force a hard reload. Right, so you would see that the load time has still come down to milliseconds for a few images. Uh, I am probably on one of the slower internet connections right now. So it's still taking seconds, but then if you still see uh, the network request, the images are actually getting served from a CDN. I am getting it served from a node in Delhi. This is what the EL corresponds to. Our page size is still the same. We are still loading 33.8 MB of content, right? So this still needs to come down, right? But then if you look at it, compared to the 20 second load time that we had from our server, this load time has come down to 10 seconds, right? So it's still a lot of content that get, that's getting loaded. We still need to optimize it. 
but then the first load time has still come down by using a CDN. So you should always be using a CDN for your images, right? Uh, and like I had mentioned earlier, ImageKit does set the right cache control headers. Our header is a slightly more elaborate version of what we saw in the first demonstration, but then it has the same impact that we are caching the image in the browser for 180 days, a maximum of 180 days. So if I do a normal reload right now, again, everything gets picked up from memory cache, even with ImageKit, right? Uh, we will cover two more things, right? As we move forward before we run the page speed test again, right? So earlier when we were doing a page speed test, our score was 64. The speed index was, we, we would be able to optimize the speed index, which is 9.4 seconds. And we would be able to optimize serve images in next gen formats. This is what we are going to solve for next, right? So what serve images in next gen format means is that you should be uh, delivering your image in the right format, right? I would quickly demonstrate it with an individual image first. Uh, so for example, I have this particular image, right? I will remove the transformation parameter. I have this image. This image originally, if I'm, let's say if I'm serving this image in JPEG format, or let's say for example, this is a WebP format right now, the image size is 91.5K. If I force this image to go to JPEG format, now WebP we know is lighter than JPEG. If we force this to JPEG, JPEG is a larger image, 148 KB. If instead we use the same image in PNG format, we are getting a 1.2 MB image, right? So with ImageKit, I'm able to change the format that we want out of the uh, image that we want the image to be delivered in. So we can clearly see that PNG image is the largest image out of uh, these three. JPEG is smaller than PNG for a photograph, right? So it is uh, 148 KBs. WebP is still smaller. It is 91.5 KBs. And AVIF, which is a very new format supported just on Chrome browsers right now. If I use AVIF, that's 62.5 KBs right now. The account that we are using to demonstrate uh, this page speed optimization does not support AVIF as of now, but then if you are an image kit user, you can always get it enabled for your account. What I will do is uh, in image kit, if I do not basically force the format, image kit automatically determines what's the right format to deliver the image in. And for example, right now it is automatically converting the image to WebP. So let's do this that we will go to, I have created a template where we are using the auto optimized image URL, right? The URL that we saw over here, uh, it's the same image URL in image kit. I had already uploaded the images in the image kit media library. So you can upload the images here. You get an image URL whenever you upload an image. So I'm just using that image URL and we would be using that in a template to load the images, right? So I, in my code, let me just replace this. So instead of using the unoptimized image, we are now going to use the optimized image that is coming from image kit. I will save this. And now you would see that earlier, the format that we were loading was JPEG. Our page size was 33.8 MB. Now, if I reload my page, the page size should come down because all the images have now been converted to WebP. Correspondingly, the time that it would take to download these images, right, we can see that the load time has come down to 6.72 seconds. We are now loading almost half the content, right? 16.9 MBs. We, we started at 33.9. Uh, now, because we have been able to convert the images to WebP, you can see the image getting delivered in WebP, even though the URL still reads JPEG, uh, we are able to bring down the page size and therefore the overall load time. Now let's look at the page speed. We'll run this test one more time at this stage. And then we will stop for some time for a few questions after we check what the page speed report comes out to be. Right, so we can already see an improvement here. Uh, we, we are still getting an error for properly resizing the images, which is what we would solve after the break. But then if you look at the past audits, we can see that efficiently encode images, which is basically compression. I'll just cover this as well. And serving images in WebP format, right? Which is, uh, you know, formats like WebP or AVIF. So image kit has been able to solve these two problems for you, right? I'll quickly talk about efficiently encode images as well, which is basically compressing the images. 
So when you actually serve images through ImageKit, right, in your dashboard, you have two options, which is basically using the best format for image delivery and optimizing the quality before delivery. So when I use the ImageKit URL, both of these actions happened at the same time. ImageKit converted the image to the right format and it also compressed the image. Therefore, our, we basically covered two points in one go, serving the images in the right format and encoding the images to the right compression level as well, right? And this is something that we covered in our last webinar as well. Uh, but then the basic idea is that ImageKit compresses the image to a level that is still visually uh, good to look at, right? It balances the compression and the visual quality. It brings down the size. That's why as a combination of these two things, right? Converting the image to the right format and automatically compressing the image. Because of this, the size of the overall, the images that we were loading came down to 16.9 MBs, right? Um, and we will look at the desktop report as well. We'll see the same result on desktop report as well. We're still getting the error for properly resizing images but then our audits for efficiently encoding and serving images in next gen formats, these are now in green, right? This is what we wanted, right? So we will now look at a few question and answers before we move ahead uh, with the other part of the webinar, right? So the first question is that, do you have any recommended tools to convert your typical JPEG, PNG to WebP or AVI format? Uh, there are quite a lot of open source tools that are available if you want to use that. I Yes, you can probably use something like let's say an image magic, maybe write your own code. There are tons of tools available out there. Or like I demonstrated, you can basically use image kit. We automatically take into account multiple factors, right? What's the format supported on the device? What's the original format? What's the original quality level? And we automatically convert it to WebP or AVIF. So you can always do that. Uh, what is the fallback to AVIF if image is not loading to Chrome? So like I mentioned, uh, if AVIF is not supported, ImageKit would automatically go back to, let's say, a WebP image if that's supported or a JPEG or PNG, because these two are always supported. So ImageKit would do that for you automatically. If you are not using ImageKit, let's say if you're building an, your own system with AVIF, WebP, and JPEG or PNG images, then I would suggest that uh, you either use a picture tag where you can load the right image depending on whether the browser supports image WebP or image AVIF or not. Uh, you can find out documentation for this on the internet that how do you load WebP or AVIF on different devices using the picture tab. If you're using image kit, it's automatically handled for you the way we had done in our code where we're basically just using the image URL in an image tag, which is basically just the image source. So image kit automatically takes care of this. Uh, Hugo has a question where does your API support extracting an image from the first frame on an uploaded video to Google Cloud Storage? Right, so Hugo, we do not support this feature right now, but then video optimization is already out there in alpha. Extracting a thumbnail out of a video is one of the features that would be available very soon. So just stay tuned. If you have signed up for ImageKit, you would get an update as soon as this feature is available. Is there a way to automatically resize images without using client side code. Uh, there are a few specifications like client hints, or you can maybe you write some JavaScript code by you know passing the right parameters, you would be able to resize them. We would cover resizing in a bit, so maybe you would understand a bit more uh, you know, once we get to that. Abey has asked, should we use cache on web apps like Facebook? Um, I'm not sure how, what phase, let's say what caching for Facebook would mean. So I might not be the best person to answer it. Maybe if you could just repeat that question, we can take this up again uh, in the break that we have towards the end. Sanjog has asked, is WebP supported in all browsers? It's almost supported in 95% browsers right now, right? So it's almost available in all the browsers except for a few. So you still need to maintain a fallback to JPEG or PNG but then uh, you should definitely be using WebP images, if not right now. Uh, George has asked what type of image will be used if the image is being requested from a mobile app, right? So if you're requesting it from mobile app, apps generally do not send uh, the accept header, which indicates what's the format that they support. So usually if your image is a JPEG, uh, the apps would continue loading a JPEG image, or if it's a PNG, they would continue using a PNG image. 
you would have to force the format the way we force the format for this particular image by adding a parameter so you or let's say if you're using any other tool for your web images or avif images so you would have to force the parameter uh, to convert the image uh, shavan has asked do you have a tool to beautify a low quality or a blurred image unfortunately no uh, but then uh, this is a problem that a lot of people are trying to solve right now so hopefully when we get to it uh, you know we would probably be able to have something like this in the future and last question from george right now if you request an image via msk without any transformation will the image be compressed by default right so yes it does get compressed by default if you look at my screen right now if you have these two settings turned on uh, the image is automatically converted to the right format and it is converted to the right quality uh, which is basically you know you can decide what's the default quality that you want to set anything between 75 to 90 is usually good page speed uses a benchmark of 85 so if your quality is higher than 85 it would start showing an error so you should keep it lower than 85 if you want to clear the page speed benchmark report 80 is usually a good number uh for your images right so if for example in this particular image even if i remove the transformation if i just access the image as it is this image is getting delivered in webp format and it is getting subject to compression right um i guess atul i have answered your question if it's a so there are two different questions atul has asked that what is what will happen on a mobile browser right so on a mobile browser it's the same as a desktop browser the image would automatically get converted to the right format depending on what the browser supports if it's a mobile app a native app like an android or an ios app their automatic conversion does not work there depending on what supported on your os or what supported in your app you would have to force the format to go to webp or let's say to go to avi if avi is supported right so for mobile apps the automatic conversion does not work but for mobile uh, browsers it works right uh we will come back to the other questions there are quite a few of them we'll come back to them towards the end so i'll start with rahul's questions towards the end for now we will just continue uh you know with with our exercise of optimizing the page speed score right so the challenge that we were left with at the end uh before we took this break was to properly resize the images right and this was a challenge for both mobile and desktop to see what image size you are loading what you should do is that if you select this uh this inspect inspector if you just hover on this image in your html if you hover on the image you would see that the size that you need is 217 by 289 but then you are loading a larger image 3024 by 4032 right so this is what tells you that if your image is resized correctly or not clearly in our case the image is not resized correctly right so you can check this for other images as well for this one for example the image size that is being rendered is 399 by 289 whereas what we are loading is 5440 by 4080 right so clearly this is a lot larger than what we need we need to bring this down to the right size so what we will do as the first step because image kit can also resize an image in real time for example i can add a parameter like width 300 or let's say width and height 300 i will get an image in real time we will use image kit to demonstrate this but then again you can uh, write your own code to let's say uh, resize your images maybe store them somewhere you could manually resize them in photoshop but then you should be resizing your image to the size that's actually required on your device what we will do in our code i already created a template that we will add a 300 by 300 resize to our images right using image kit and we will use this on our page so i will just replace this with product underscore resize and if i save this now we we'll go back to network and you would see that the images now will have a 300 by 300 parameter towards the end right i'll give it a refresh you can see all the images now have the parameter 300 by 300 you can see that the load time has come down significantly because now the browser instead of having to download mbs of data it just had to download a few kbs every time right so if you see the total page size uh, the image size uh, for the 17 requests is now down to just 176 kb right so we started at 33.9 mb 
uh, with the first set of optimizations, which was converting to the right format and compressing the image, we brought it down to half, that's 16.9. But then from there, 16.9 MB to 176 KB is just a result of resizing the image, right? So if I keep reloading the page, you would see that even if it is getting downloaded from the network, it's a small size. It takes just milliseconds to download this image, right? Uh, but let's run the page speed report at this stage, right? So we have now resized the image as well. Let's run the page speed report and see uh, what the results are on both mobile and desktop. Right, so if we look at the mobile report, the properly sized images audit is still failing. It's definitely a lot better than what it was earlier. Right, so it's still not right on mobile, but then on desktop, it's fixed already. Right, so if I go to past audits, the properly sized images audit is clear for desktop. Right, and the reason for that is that when we added the 300 by 300 height and width, I basically added it for my desktop screen size. I never really looked at what my mobile screen size is. If I go back to my mobile screen, you can see that the images that you need on the mobile screen are a lot smaller than 300 by 300, right? So for mobile, even a 300 by 300 image is larger, right? We need a 78 by 78 pixel uh, image over here. This is a 360 pixel wide device. So we need a 78 by 78 pixel image over here, whereas, whereas we are loading a 300 by 300 pixel image, right? So again, this is uh, not the right size to load for a mobile device. So we need to find a balance between the two. We need to find out uh, whether uh, you know, we should be able to load the right image size for desktop and the right image size for mobile devices as well. And again, this is something that we discussed in our last webinar as well, that we should be using responsive images, right? What a responsive image does is, I'll quickly show you the code for it, that apart from providing a single source, which is basically your uh, product image, we are providing a source set, which is a list of different image sizes, right? So we are using ImageKit to create these different image sizes in real time. We are basically providing a list of images at 100 cross 100, 200 cross 200, 300 cross 300, 500, and 800, right? And we are specifying the corresponding width with them, right? So the first image is of 100 width, the second image is of 200 width, and so on, right? And the second attribute that we are adding is the sizes attribute that we are saying that on any device that has a maximum size of 480 pixel, a maximum width of 480 pixel, which is typically your mobile devices, we need, let's say, a size of 90 pixels, right? So on my 360 pixel wide mobile device, we saw that the size that we need was 78 by 78. So we will assume that till 480, maybe we'll need a size till like 90 pixels. That's what we have specified over here, that till 480, we need a 90 pixel wide image Otherwise, load a 300 pixel wide image, right? Which is basically our desktop screen. This is a very simple specification. So let's see how this works. I will replace my simple resize with a responsive image tag. And now if I reload this page, you would see, if I go to the network and just expand this, Just a second, we need to probably move these things a bit. You would see, I am actually using a Retina screen. So what the browser does is it combines the uh, size specification that you have specified along with the Retina display that I have. It automatically picks up the 300 by 300 pixel image size from this list, right? So, and you can check this if you go to the image in the same way. You can see that the browser now has a list of URLs. If you hover over this, the browser would show that what's the current image that is being used, right? So you can see the current source that is being so showed up. It's a width 300 and a height 300 image. The that's the intrinsic size that we have 300 by 300 pixel. Whereas if I close this mobile simulation. If I go back to the desktop view, if I load the image over here, I'll just reload the page. 
the browser is now loading a 500 by 500 pixel image, right? So we are able to load different image sizes. The browser is automatically able to determine what's the size that's needed, what's the device uh, display density, and it automatically picks up the right URL for display, right? Uh, let's look at the page speed report now that we have, let's say, run the, we have done responsive images as well. Page speed does respect responsive images. In fact, every a uh, good tool out there like Lighthouse, PageSpeed, Web Page Test, all of these do honor uh, use of responsive images. So now if you look at the mobile report, uh, the audit for properly sized images is also in green. And if you go to the desktop report, the audit is still in green, right? So properly sized images has also been solved, right? So till now we have been able to solve uh, three things properly size images, efficiently encode images, and serve images in next gen formats. And even though uh, page speed was not picking up on the cache policy, but then we have been able to resolve the cache policy as well, which has brought down our speed index. We started at somewhere upwards of nine seconds. This has now come down to 3.2 seconds and our score obviously has gone up, right? So we're already seeing significant improvement on both uh, mobile and desktop. The speed index here is still not so good, but then probably if we run the analyzer again, uh, the speed index would come up as well. And our image rate audits are already in green, right? Now, one thing, again, it's something that page speed did not pick up on this particular page, but then it's very typical of e-commerce applications to have a lot of product images on the page, right? You would have probably 50 or 60 product images loading on the same page. Now, if I just, Look at the page right now. Let's say a user lands on this screen. The only two products that they can see is just these two products. Right? They are not able to see anything else. Even though there are 16 other images, they are not able, they are just able to see these two. It is possible that the user comes on your page and clicks on one of these links and just navigates away from the page, which would mean that had there been, let's say 50 or 60 product images on this page and the user just navigates away, you would have actually wasted time and bandwidth in downloading all of those images, right? So that's what the idea is of defer off screen images, where if there is any image that is not on the screen, it's not visible to the user, you have to delay the load of that particular image, right? So any image outside of, let's say, these two, or maybe the next two images, because let's assume that the user would scroll. So the next two images, we can have these loaded but then everything else can be deferred to a later stage, right? We have a very extensive guide written about it for, for lazy loading images. Again, the link for this would be available after the webinar. But then what we would do is that uh, to lazy load the image, I would, I would be using native lazy loading. Again, native lazy loading is available in uh, modern browsers. It's not supported on all the browsers. So uh, browsers upwards of Chrome 76, Chromium, Edge, Safari, Firefox, they do use native lazy loading. All that you need to do is to provide this attribute, loading equal to lazy in your image tag, and the browser would take care of automatically deferring the load. However, since this is not supported on all the browsers, you would still need to use a JS file, right? So lazy, lazy loading libraries are available on the internet. They use modern techniques like intersection observer. They would use the native lazy loading as well. So just use a lazy loading JS file on your page. Uh, there is a list that's provided in this blog that would be shared later. But then let's look at the impact of lazy load, right? So what we have done is that we have taken the same uh, responsive image tag that we had earlier, and we have added the loading equal to lazy attribute to this. So let's use this on our page and let's see what's the impact on the page load, right? And how this works, right? So I will save this. I will expand this a bit. Now, if I reload the page, you would see that the browser has loaded only six images, even though there are uh, 16 products on this page, the browser has loaded only six of them. So it has basically anticipated that the user would scroll a bit. So the user can quickly get to, let's say six images if, if he scrolls, but then images after that, they are not needed on the page, right? So the browser has not loaded them. Only when I start scrolling now, let's say I reach to the middle of this image, you, have, you can see there are two more requests that are fired, right? So there are now nine requests uh, that have loaded on the page. If I scroll a bit further, 
when I reach the middle of the next image, the browser would fire two more requests, right? So it has fired two more requests. The reason it is firing two requests is because images, there are two images at the same, let's say scroll height on the page. So there are two images that are getting loaded whenever I scroll, right? So if I scroll a bit further, there are 11 images right now. If I scroll a bit further, there are 13 images right now, right? And if I just quickly scroll through, the browser has loaded all these 17 images, right? So in this way, if I am loading the page right with lazy loading, the browser starts with, let's say in this case, it has started with, okay, I'll just scroll up and start again. The browser loads just six images. So our initial data transfer, which is which has gone down to now 181 KBs uh, on desktop. So our initial data transfer is low. Because this is low, this leaves enough bandwidth for the user or for the browser to be able to download other content, right? So you're basically reducing competition for downloading other content on the page, right? You're minimizing that competition which helps your page to load faster, right? And this is indicated in the page speed report under the attribute called defer off screen images. If your page has a lot of images uh, on, this, on your page, if there are a lot of images, you should be using uh, lazy loading for any image that is not really in the viewport. Let's say it's far from the viewport. Do not lazy load these images, right? These should appear as soon as possible. So do not lazy load them but then you can lazy load almost every other images, image that's you know a few scrolls away from where the user lands for the first time, right? So with this, we have covered the six techniques that we uh, you know, wanted to cover for our page speed report. Since this report was already green, I'm not running the page uh, speed report again, but then we can now see that all the image related audits, resizing, lazy loading, compression, serving images in the right format, and, using the right cache policy, we have been able to address all of them. So we started in the red, we started with the low score. We started with the page that was 33.9 MBs in size and we were able to bring it down to a few KBs from a 20 second plus page load time. We are now down to a few milliseconds of load time, right? So that's the improvement that we are able to see. A couple of things that we did not cover, which I had mentioned at the beginning. There are two more things that you can do. Again, these are like, uh, you know, we need to deep dive into each of them. Probably we'll do them in a subsequent webinar, but then we have added links to this that you can preload your LCP image. LCP means the largest contentful pane. You can preload this uh, LCP image using the preload uh, link tag so that if there is an image right at the top of your page, the browser would load it even before it loads everything else, right? So that's one. And the second, which uh, a few of you might have seen in your page speed reports is to set an explicit height and width on the image tag. Otherwise you would probably get an error with CLS, which is your content layout shift. It's indicated in the page cumulative layout shift, which is indicated in the report here. Ideally, this should be zero, that your uh, layout should not be shifting if you specify the right height and width on the image tag. If it is shifting, you should be specifying the height and width on your image tag. Again, I have added the link. Maybe we can cover it in a subsequent session. There are links to other guides that talk about, let's say, caching, lazy loading, and resizing that are already available. Uh, and yes, this is how you would basically optimize your page speed score for uh, images for a faster website, right?